Welcome to the Columbia School of Journalism. I'm Jane Eisner, and I'm here with my colleagues Marguerite Holloway, Elisa Solomon, Nick Lemon, and Winnie O'Kelly. And we're here to talk to you about the Masters of Arts program. I'm the director of the program. I just started this job a few months ago, and it is a real privilege to work with experienced journalists from all over the world who come here to go deeply into four different areas arts, business, politics, and science. And we're here to talk to you about each of those concentrations and the purpose of the program and what you will get out of it if you should come. Nick, first, can we talk a little bit about how this program began? It started when you were dean of the school and now you teach in the politics concentration. What made you think that a Masters of Arts program was an important component of our school? Well, um, we thought that, that, that uh, much, not all, of journalistic training has to do with acquiring skills that exist with inside newsrooms and, and in delivery systems for journalism, how to make a documentary film, how to do a podcast, et cetera. And that's obviously super important to getting a job, but there's another level, which is how to understand the substance of complicated issues you might be asked to cover. We're, that was very much the vision of our school's founder, Joseph Pulitzer, that we would do that. And uh, it's a good place to do it because we're in a university where there is expertise on every subject in the world. So the purpose of the MA was to take you, assume you have the skills, and take you into the substance of complicated issues how to cover them and understand them in a specifically journalistic way. So how do you do that in the politics seminar? Well, I should say by politics, we don't, we, politics sounds narrow like we cover elections. We are interested in elections, but it's, it's really the full range of politics, government, non-government organizations, et cetera, how, how societies function or govern themselves. Um, and we do that by, in the, it's two semesters. In the first semester, uh, we, my colleague uh, Alexander Stila covers sort of big concepts like what is a state, how are resources allocated, et cetera. In the second semester, um, we cover institutions, legislatures, political parties, bureaucracies, things like that. Um, and it's a combination always of political science and other academic material and journalistic material. Our guests are a combination of academics and journalists, and some actual living, breathing politicians even. And, and uh, we're always trying to make the connections from journalism to bigger context, from research to specific journalistic uses. Well, thank you. So Marguerite, you've been here since the program began. Tell us about the science concentration. So the science concentration, all the um, concentrations are organized in the way that Nick described. They run across two semesters, and we meet twice a week. And usually there's an expert one day, and then just sort of focus in the workshop with just the class of the journalism school professor the other day. Um, in science, we try to look at a bunch of different fields. So we'll look at physics, we'll look at ecology, we'll look at neuroscience, we'll look at climate change, um, technology, and what we're trying to do, obviously you can't become an expert in any one of those fields in that short period of time, maybe two or three weeks of focus on that subject area. But we use that as a way of looking at larger patterns and themes that allow you to develop sort of a critical habit of mind or an understanding of patterns that run across all of the sciences. Um, so in the physics segment, for example, we'll look at how scale changes things. Um, in maybe the chemistry segment, we'll look at, we'll use it as a way of talking about the role of metaphor in science and scientific exploration, and then how to bring that into journalistic practice and how to think critically about metaphor. Thank you. So Elisa, you've also been here since the program began. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the arts and culture section and, and how you approach those very big topics. Okay. So uh, 
the arts and culture seminar does similar things to uh, science and politics and no doubt business <laughs> that you'll hear about in a moment in the sense of its organization and its overall goals and uh, probably we'll get to this in a minute but I should say that the, we're just talking about the seminars right now which are the the core course at the heart of the program but there are electives and other courses and of course the capstone project the thesis that we'll get to um, so I'm just talking about the seminar right now um, <coughs> We organize it around key concepts in arts and culture. We define culture in a very wide sort of anthropological sense. And we start in the fall in somewhat more, I think you could say more abstract questions like what is art? What is culture? How do we define who an artist is? We try to historicize those concepts and then build on that. And as Nick said in the, in the politics concentration in arts and culture as well, we're reading the work of scholars, researchers, um, longtime critics, and also artists, and we have visits from scholars in various fields that are adjacent to what we're doing. So we spend two sessions on unpacking the concept of culture. Where did that come from? How is it mobilized? Those kinds of questions. Um, we just this morning had a unit on experimental film where uh, the, the kind of overarching question is, what do we do as arts writers when we encounter work that we don't already have a vocabulary for, that mm -hmm. we don't already know where to put it or how to describe it? And in the past, we've talked about exper excuse me, experimental music in that respect. Um, today, we looked at, at film with a scholar of experimental film here at Columbia named Ronald Gregg and had a, a really terrific um, conversation about that. The other th and then in the spring, the focus gets a little more uh, nitty gritty on two questions of economics, policy, politics, policy, um, funding, things like that. And of course, we have the advantage of being here in New York City. So we are going to things all the time as well. Um, we do a, a beautiful tour through the Museo del Barrio of the street art of East Harlem and then visit the museum. We do a Chelsea Gallery tour. We have a project with Theater for a New Audience where we attend rehearsals of a Shakespeare production. Um, we cover, in the fall, we cover an arts festival called Crossing the Line, which is a whole bunch of weird experimental work that people are just like thrown into right away doing one review and one reported story. And um, we're collaborating with the website Hyperallergic this year that's posting some of the stories, which is really exciting. Great, thank you. So Winnie, you recently <coughs> took over the business concentration. Tell us about it. So as everyone has sort of explained here, we basically start in the fall with a real overview. So from my point of view, that's an economics overview. Uh, and we look at everything from economies that seem to be failing, like Venezuela, to economies that are doing much better but also have problems. We try to understand what the economic agents are, the governments, the companies, the individuals, the labor market, and we sort of take it apart. Um, we look at the biggest topics of the day and the biggest issues that are very much uh, a matter of debate. That would be things like inequality. We also break down into understanding the forces at play in the, in the economy and the interplay between them. So that goes um, down to things like um, fiscal policy, which would be the governments and what they do. It would be monetary policy, which would be central banks. It would be companies. It would be right down to individuals. What are consumer choices and how are those deciding what we all um, have uh, in front of us uh, to choose from and how we invest our money uh, and what kind of work we do. So lots of big picture topics. We try to break it down. Uh, there's a lot of really healthy discussion with an international student body here uh, between what they think is an economic outcome that's good versus not. Uh, and we try to break down those preconceptions and really drill into what does and doesn't work. Now that's in the fall with the seminar. In the seminar in the spring, we get a little bit more nitty gritty. And we definitely get into how you cover industries and companies. And that would include things like arts organizations and political organizations and NGOs too, trying to understand the finances behind them uh, how to read financial statements, how to break down whether something is healthy or not as a company or not, and wrestle with what uh, constitutes uh, good corporate governance and topics like that. Thanks, Winnie. As you can see, the seminars in each discipline are a core part of this program, but the MA program also offers so much more. We have an essential skills class that uh, is offered first semester to all students. Uh, taught by top-notch investigative journalists from around the city who 
teach students about data in, and investigative skills that we think are important no matter what discipline you major in. Um, we also have a course called Evidence and Inference that Nick teaches. And of course, the important part of the whole program is the master's thesis, essentially a very long form, deeply reported uh, piece of narrative nonfiction that students spend almost all year on. So Nick, tell us a little bit about E&I and the master's thesis. Okay, so the master's thesis is, uh, we're currently saying an 8,000 word uh, piece of journalism. It's almost always the longest piece of journalism that the students have done. When we say words, it can be executed in any medium the student wants. Sometimes students pair up and do a video or podcast or radio presentation. Sometimes they do, more often they do it in print and or in words. It, it doesn't have to be 8,000 words. I've had some come in longer. But, you know, it's amazing what they do. Uh, we have uh, travel funds, so a lot of the students travel globally to do their thesis projects. And um, many of them have been published in various forms. And it, it's, it's just been, in the years of the program, an amazing and, and happy surprise how far you can get with one project in one academic year when you're also taking other courses. Yeah. Um, so, so they've been e executed really from all over the world in all media. It's really a f fun to do. And then the evidence and inference course, in, you know, every field when you land in a master's uh, program has a methods course. This is our methods course. And it's really a, t a trying to get journalists to first learn to think more rigorously uh, and analytically about their work. Um, and second, it imports some skills from other fields that we think are of use in journalism. Uh, for example, how to interview like an oral historian instead of like a, a, a conventional journalist how to be literate in reading things that are expressed statistically, and things like that. Um, so this is a course that the whole MA class takes as a group, um, and, and uh, it's supposed to be a sort of platform for how to think about doing this kind of work. Thank you. So the other key element of the MA program is that we're here at Columbia University, and students take classes elsewhere in the university both semesters. Um, they get a chance to really go deep deeply into subject matters that affect their uh, futures and, um, and learn from just amazing professors. And of course, because we're journalists and um, we care about getting jobs <laughs> and getting our work published, uh, we pay a lot of attention to that as well. Starting in September, the Career Services Department uh, holds workshops to help students polish their resumes and their cover letters, apply for internships, and then work together to find the right kinds of jobs. So maybe you can all just tell us um, briefly uh, where some of your graduates have, have ended up. What kind of work are they able to do after this program? Um, so they've ended up in lots of amazing places. They've ended up at the New York Times, New York Times Magazine, Outside, Vice, Huffington Post, uh, Washington Post. Um, many of them are freelancing also and really making a very, um, very good career out of that. Uh, from last year, I was trying to think in preparation for this video, um, one student who had been freelancing in Canada is now here at Frontline and doing a lot more investigative work and she feels that the program really helped her start thinking about science in a very sort of in a more critical way and um, she is really enjoying that a lot and another student from last year was is from Chile and she had been working in the technology sector and felt that she wanted to develop a way of reporting on technology and be more critical about it she's now at popular science so those are two uh, two recent examples, but they've they've done very well, and but not all of them have ended up in jobs. Some of them are also uh, freelancing and seem to be doing well with that. 
That's great. How about arts and culture, Lisa? Yeah, so um, I'm excited to answer that. But I want to say one thing about the thesis first. And that is um, <laughs> that, you know, it's called a thesis because I think for university accreditation, it has to be called a thesis. But it's a, it's a work of long-form narrative journalism. And um, I just think it's important to, to stress that it's not an academic paper. It's a, it's a story. And it's a story that uh, challenges students to marry the demands of narrative with the um, with some big ideas and um, analysis, so it's a really exciting it's a really exciting thing to work on. Um, as for where our students go in, from arts and culture, um, kind of all over the place. Um, some choose to freelance. We're a very international program, as Jane <coughs> said. So a number of our students who uh, come from uh, countries outside the U.S. go home to uh, the places they came from and are actually helping to build a more vibrant and um, more nuanced um, culture of cultural reporting, which is very exciting to see. Some of them here, a uh, recent graduate um, went right from here to become the head of the culture desk at the NPR affiliate in Boston, WBUR, um, where she's just tearing things up and um, making us proud and excited every day. We have a, an editor and writer at um, Esquire. We have an editor at Huffington Post, Smithsonian Magazine, um, a, an executive producer at Vox Video, um, and uh, um, a feature writer and editor at Engadget. We could, I could go on and on. And one of the things that's quite interesting about the graduates of arts and culture is that many of them do find a way to uh, to pursue careers in writing about the arts, um, but a number branch off into other areas. Uh, one of our graduates has been a, a very successful political reporter, for example, at the Daily Beast and New York Magazine. Um, another is writing about technology, and I think what happens in this program, no matter what your concentration is, is that you develop certain habits of mind and abilities to sort of ask the questions under the questions, to know how to research something deeply, to know how to identify the best experts and how to, how to talk to them about something. And those are skills that are applicable across really any field. Nick, how about politics? I mean, we certainly have a lot of graduates doing amazing work. We do. I want to say first, you know, we're kind of a family business here. so. I'm sure my colleagues can attest, there's never a week and there's almost never a day that I don't hear from one of our politics graduates. Mm -hmm. We're very much yeah. in touch. So, you know, right before we went on here, I was emailing with Haley Sweetland Edwards, who's one of the lead political writers for Time Magazine, about her cover story on Elizabeth Warren. Um, I want to mention especially uh, some of our graduates have been brave and been journalistic entrepreneurs. Kelly Niknajad started a wonderful site called Tehran Bureau, which is, in my opinion, the single best place in the world to get news about what's going on inside Iran. Uh, Vinod Jose and a, a number of others started uh, the best magazine in India, in my unbiased opinion, <laughs> called Caravan, which does the kind of long-form journalism we do in the program, and Vinod is the editor of it now. Um, Terry McCoy has just been named the Brazil Bureau Chief for the Washington Post. Katie Worth works at Frontline. Ben Taub works at The New Yorker, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's a lot of, um, and, and they're very global groups, so they're all over the place mm -hmm. doing really interesting things. And Winnie, I know you've paid special attention to um, helping the business students get the <laughs> best jobs they could get. Yeah, you know, I have to say they're in great demand, so that's one of the beautiful things about it. When you talk about why students come into the program, I get a, a real wide variety. Um, last year, for example, one came in who was a photographer, and he had a background, but he'd not really been a, a journalist, and now he's a working journalist at Business Insider and very enthusiastic and loving it. He says, wow, you know, we learned what Uber was going to do when it went public, and it did exactly what you said it was going to do and what we figured out it was going to do. I feel confident now in this subject matter. Um, but <coughs> they come from all over the world. I have some this year from the BBC who will actually be going back to the BBC. Um, there are people who have landed at Bloomberg and are doing quite well there, working on investigative stories and covering the tech industry. Um, I've had people come from India where they've been working and covering tech companies uh, and really interested in having a better grasp of the bigger picture of how business and the economy works. 
and I think they feel like they walk out of here with like a, oh, I get it now. Before I was just kind of covering this company, but I didn't quite understand what was going on. So a lot of those folks. So in addition to all the places you've mentioned, um, I'll throw out that one of the students from a few years ago who did such a wonderful thesis, it's been a book and it's been published. And so she's right now working as a TA for me here, and mm -hmm. we're enjoying that experience. But that's an example of, yes, you can work on a thesis. It happened to have an arts component, as it turned out, but it was the business of the arts. Um, and her thesis advisor is really good, and so she continued with it and has, had, and has published it now. For everyone who's coming in, I sort of give them the same, uh, try to give them the same understanding, which is we're trying to help you understand all those linkages in whatever profession you're going, or whatever concentration you're going to wind up in, whether you're going to cover politics or business or government or science. You want to understand how a carbon tax will work or all these other kinds of things. You want to understand you know, where the money's going for in government. You want to be able to root out corruption. And I think that is sort of what brings everybody passionately together. So as you can see, um, the students who are in the MA program come from all over the world. About half uh, of the students this year are from nations outside the U.S. And they come here um, with a great deal of curiosity and desire to go deep into subjects, but also to learn a lot about the craft of journalism. Um, just share with me, if you will, what you think makes the ideal MA student. So the ideal MA student is, as you said, someone who is very curious. I would say someone who gets passionate about ideas and about looking for nuance, um, who likes sort of engaging with complexity. Um, in the science program, we're looking for people who may have a background in science, but who absolutely may not. Um, most of the people who've come through the science program don't, and they're very interested in connecting and understanding science in the larger context is just one of many human endeavors um, as sort of really thinking about science in society. Um, and one thing I would want to add as well is that we're looking for people who are interested in being creative and experimenting with storytelling. Narrative is a very strong part of the MA program, whether it happens in long form, as with the thesis, or even in a you know a, an 800 word story you can use the techniques of narrative and so we spend a lot of time on that and we're looking for people who are interested in in that as well mm -hmm. anything else to add yeah i think i think what marguerite said applies to all of the concentrations um, and certainly we're looking for that same kind of intellectual curiosity um, eagerness to learn and to go deeply into subject matter, to understand things from different perspectives, to um, be, to care about constructing a considered argument, uh, contextualized, historicized, um, about a work of art, for example, rather than just spewing an opinion, um, that, that idea of, you know, criticism as, as something deeper, as well as, as reporting. And I, I'd also like to say that our, our application suggests that that applicants uh, should have had you know, some number of years of experience already. And that's a pretty good benchmark, but I'd say that when we're reading applications, what matters more yeah. than the number of years is the nature and quality of the work. And there have been occasions when we've taken students who've been quite young, but they've maybe been the editor-in-chief of a daily paper at a college campus, or they've been doing uh, interning where they've actually done a lot of mm -hmm. professional writing. And so I like to think more of, you know, could you go out today and report a reasonably, complica reasonably complicated multi-source story? Have you done that before? If all of your stories have been interviewing one person um, in one interview to write a 400-word story, probably you're not ready for this program yet, and you would benefit more from our MS program. But if, if you've had those kinds of experiences and what you're looking for is to go deeper into subject matter, um, be challenged by long-form narrative, kind of up your game in your field, then this is the program for you. Um, I would say, you know, echoing what, what Elisa said, we, we've several times over the years had people who had never done any journalism, but that tends not to work that well because we're not set up to take you from zero to sort of basic journalism skills. Uh, we're the sort of next step. We're a repertorial program. So if, if w w you know, we really honor going out and talking to people, getting on a plane, getting on a bus, and going somewhere far away and talking to people. Uh, so I strongly prefer 
applicants who show passion about journalism, accomplishment from the work they've done, and a commitment to reporting. And I just want to throw in this one question because I get asked all the time, do I have to have business experience? Do I have to understand like basic business concepts? No, you don't. Uh, but I do think you have to be intellectually engaged. And that's one of the exciting things about the kind of work we do here mm -hmm. and this area of the profession. Uh, in the fall, you'll take an accounting class and then you'll do a corporate finance class in the spring. Those are pretty deep, intensive courses that will let you walk out of this school with a really great skill set. Uh, and you combine that with a repertorial thing. So I don't think you have to have business experience. In fact, I've had people who've come in as lawyers. I've had people who've come in as financial analysts, people who've been doing other kinds of work. There's not a one-size-fits-all mm -hmm. criteria here. But I do think you have to be a very comfortable rider. And that kind of goes to the point that you were already saying. Well, thank you all so much. You can tell that uh, one of the amazing attributes of this program is the quality of the faculty. All of my colleagues here are dedicated teachers, and they're also really active working journalists. So they um, also themselves have an amazing creative output, and we all benefit from that. Um, so if you are interested in the MA program, please contact the Office of Admissions uh, by uh, email uh, on the website. You're always welcome to stop by our school at 116th Street and Broadway in New York City and find out more about this program. Um, thank you for listening. I'm Jane Eisner, Director of Academic Affairs here at the Journalism School, and I hope I will see you soon.